Hey, uh, need you to cooperate. <laughs> Miss Tara Moses, hello. How is New York treating you? Very well, very well. We haven't reached my six week max. <laughs> So, so far, so good. Well, because you're always on the go. Like, this is just mm -hmm. one stop for you. Not even the first stop. I was in Atlanta right before I came here. So from Tulsa to Atlanta, Atlanta's straight here. And then before that, I was in San Francisco. I was in Honolulu for a fellowship, not for vacation. You're premiering your first play, not just as a writer, not just as a director, but as both. Tell me about Bound. Oh, yes. As you can see, I have uh, lots of promo. Zoom in, zoom in. Ooh, ah, look, oh. beautiful. Over here, great, more information. So it's my directing and playwriting New York City debut. It is set in modern day as well as the 1850s, and it follows Marigold Page, who is working for her nation, the Tohono Autumns, to resist the building of the Southern Wall. And then in conjunction with that, in the 1850s, it follows the Gaston Purchase, which is how we have the modern day Southern border of the United States and Mexico. And so it's really cool because it's a play about sovereignty and about Trump and his wall we don't say his name <laughs> but it's really cool to hear how the rhetoric of the 1850s is very similar to what we hear now I've had letters upon letters speeches upon speeches that inform the actual dialogue and you hear people like James Gaston and Jefferson Davis refer to natives and Mexicans as animals and I'm like well where does that come from this rhetoric isn't new it's recycled so it's been really cool a really exciting process to see how they intertwine and it's going really well and so how is it working with Amarinda? Yes, Amarinda is American Indian Artists Incorporated. They go by Amarinda. They are a multidisciplinary, multi-arts organization for specifically Native artists. And it has been so lovely. I've wanted to work with Amarinda for years now once I learned about them, that there was a Native theater company in New York and they were part of the people who led the Native arts movement with their original artists. They have the Native Shakespeare Ensemble, which is awesome. And a lot of the people who are working artists now who I really admire, got their starts at Amarenda, have been doing lots of things with Amarenda. So I'm really excited. It's been lovely. I'm so excited. <laughs> How important is it to lean into who you are as a human? So important. I mean, because sure, right now theaters are starting to produce their first Native work, but they're not being directed by Native directors. Mm. The creative teams do not have Natives on them. I have a spreadsheet. There's a lot of <laughs> people you can hire. Anyway, there's always this translation issue because we're talking about Indigenous storytelling, things that are really imperative to what it's like to be a Native person, and you have to translate those to individuals who live within settler colonialism, which is 98% of the country, aka the 2% who are not native, live in there. It's always difficult to try to get individuals who are non-native to understand why a process needs to be a certain way, like why we start out with ceremony, how that's really important. Also about how there are things that we don't translate for non-native audiences for them to understand. With Amarinda, it's just so easy. It's so easy. Day one of rehearsal, we started with ceremony. I have one non-native actor in the cast. He was great. He was lovely. <laughs> he was a little worried, but then he was just fine. Because it's an inclusive process. And not having to explain what tribal sovereignty means, not having to write out very long study guides, being able to have native designers, a native production manager, a 90% native cast with a native organization where my thoughts and ideas aren't questioned and I don't have to explain the history behind it. So whenever I pitched this to Amarinda, I was like, yeah, so it takes place in 1850s and now by the Gadsden Purchase and the drawing of a southern border and how that's like not indigenous. And they're like, great! Whereas like I've been having to explain it more to other folks. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's lovely to just be authentic and not have to constantly live in those two world spaces, code switching, as well as having to like kind of assimilate to get people on board and then eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's been nice, refreshing. And what should audiences expect when they come see Bound? They should expect an unapologetically indigenous story. But what we have done with the cast and the creative team is make it where you don't just come and you just see natives doing native things on stage, but you come and you are invited into the storytelling. And so it's not a scary experience. You're not going to be ostracized. You're not going to not know what's going on. It was written and developed in such a way where it was holistically indigenous while also being accessible for non-native audiences. Yes. Go like this, go like this. This one? Yeah. 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 The hair goes everywhere. 
Oh, it's part of it's part of the part of the territory. Part of it. 